Hallelujah. Praise God. This is the night the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because we have a choice. Amen. If you have a cell phone, shut it off. God is not going to call you. Remember, God never interrupts himself. Amen. <laughs> oh, it's time to run to the throne, not the phone. Glory, glory. Can, can everybody hear me? Okay. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor. Tell him this is your night to learn so we don't get burned. You know, it's training, isn't it? Training for reigning. We're going to grab the manual. They call the Bible. Remember, this is not a religious operation. This is a military operation. We have been rescued to fulfill a purpose. We've been sent into this realm to fulfill a mission. Far be it that we don't. Amen? Far be it that we don't. 2 Timothy chapter 3, in verse 1, what does it say? But know what? Know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Are we in the last days? Amen. Let me tell you, you can expect perilous times. You never know when you're going to give up your last breath. That's why it's important to be right with God. Amen. It says, for men will be lovers of themselves. Amen. Lovers of what? Money, boasters. Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. They deny Christ. And from such people, what? Turn away. Turn away. For these are the sort that creep into households and ministries and make captives of gullible men and women and load them down with sins, led away with various lusts. They're always learning, but they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Why? Because truth sets you free. Not knowing the truth sets you free. Practicing the truth sets you free. Amen? Yeah. See, one of the things that is occurring here with many individuals is they're they're only looking at the physical. They're not seeing through the physical into the spiritual. They're not realizing where their influence is coming from. They just think every thought is their own. Amen? In Genesis chapter 3, would you go there with me now? In Genesis 3, oh, hallelujah. It's in verse 1, it says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, As God did said that you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And of course, the woman responded to the serpent. We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the trees which are in the midst of the garden, God said, no, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. In other words, in other words disconnect from him. Then the serpent said to the woman, oh, come on, you're not going to die, it's all right. For God knows that when you, know, when you partake with me, when you partake with me in this deal, your eyes are going to be open and you're going to become really wise. And you'll be like God. They already were like God. He lied to her. Knowing good and evil, and the woman saw that the tree was good for food. That it was pleasant to the eyes. It was desirable to make one wise. It's called lust. She took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband with him and invited him. Then the eyes of both of them were what? open, but in spiritually they were closed. They became blinded. And they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And 
Then they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden because they could no longer see him. And Adam and his wife hid themselves because for the first time they sensed fear. They never knew what fear was. And the Lord called to Adam and said, where are you at? Like he didn't know where he's at. And he said, I heard your voice because I couldn't see you anymore. In the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked because I did something I wasn't supposed to. And I hid myself. And he said, who told you that? <laughs> who told you that? Where did you get that other voice from? Have you partaken of that tree I commanded you not to partake? Now you've exchanged my voice for that voice. And of course, immediately, verse 12, the man said the what? The woman. The woman, did it. the woman whom you gave to me. <laughs> she gave me that tree I partook. And the Lord said to the woman, what is this that you've done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me. See, there was a blame game going on here. Everyone say blame game. blame game. It's called a blame in spirit. It's a blaming spirit. And the Lord said to the serpent, because you've done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle and more than every beast of the field. And on your belly you shall go because he was upright. And you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I'm going to put hatred enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed because she was carrying two seeds. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. And the woman said, and to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your, and your conception in pain. You shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and not for the serpent. And he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have partaken of the tree which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat it, curses the ground for your sake, and in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. You shall eat the herb of the field, and sweat of your face shall be bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return." And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living, good and evil. Amen? So we see that there was a blame game going on. Amen? This blaming spirit that blames is also an accuser. It's criticized, a critical spirit. The reason for the blame is to reject responsibility. Does everybody get it? People blame to reject responsibility. And why do they reject responsibility? Because they do not have true identity. The lack of loss of identity of who they are. Blame is a character of a fallen evil nature. Which we call... The old man. What it tries to do is release self from responsibility by blaming others, circumstances, and even God. Because your old man and my old man is called the devil. So everybody got it. It was an offspring of darkness. That's why we walked around in lust before we were born again. The serpent began the lust right in the garden. And John chapter 8. Again, why do people blame? They because they reject responsibility. And why do they reject responsibility? Because of loss of identity. Loss of who they are. That's the one thing the enemy does not want you to ever get. And that's the one thing he wants to steal from you. Your identity. You know, people do all kinds of strange things. That's why it says in the last, these perilous times will come. Why? People go to all kinds of places to try to find themselves. 
to find, find who they are. They think that they're going to find fulfillment. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, and every other thing out there that's lustful. But it's only temporary, isn't it? Trying to find their identity. You find your identity in the presence of God and in His Word. Without those two, you never find your identity. You'll, you'll be deceived. You'll be cloned just like the evil one. And you'll stay cloned. And if you die in that condition, you go to hell. You know, it grieved me when I heard about what occurred. You know why? Because the first thing that came to me was how many of those individuals woke up in hell? It broke my heart. Because who you serve when you die is where you go. You're either serving the righteous one or the evil one. That's it. You know how many people were warned by God? You don't think God tried to rescue many people from this uh, event? Trying to tell them, don't go there. But they wouldn't heed. Some people left a few minutes beforehand. Amen? But they didn't hear. Hey, evil things happen because we're under an evil ruler, aren't we? But those who are under Christ are not under an evil ruler. Amen? God always makes a way of escape. But things do happen, don't they? Because the world is evil and the days are evil. But if you're right with God, you've got no problem. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And John 8, verse 1, would you read it with me? But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when he, they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in every act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such a woman should be stoned. But what do you say? They said this, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear them. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw the first stone first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman in the mist. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are your accusers? Where are your blamers? Has no one condemned you? And she said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and do what? Sin no more. He gave her an opportunity, didn't he? Go and sin no more. Why? Because if you continue to sin, the wages of sin is what? Death and separation, disconnect with God. Then Jesus spoke to them and again saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me, follows. What's the word follow mean? believe. If you say you're a follower, then you're a believer. If you say you're a believer, you're a follower. If you're not a believer, if you're not a follower, then you're not a believer. That's just the way it is. See, we got to begin to look through the eyes of God, not through the eyes of man. We got to stop acting human and start acting immortal because we are eternal. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of what? Life. He who follows me, the accusers, blamers. What does he say? Go and sin no more. Listen, people bring on their own problems because there is a law called what you sow is what you reap. We bring on our own stuff, don't we? Amen? 
you know, my, one day I was driving and I'm going through the parking lot. My phone fell. I went to pick it up. Bam, bam, car back up. Boom, I hit it. That I, was it my fault? Yes. I could have left the phone down there and paid attention. Amen. God says he desires no one to perish. No one. I can't tell me how many times I've been rescued. How many times destruction has occurred? Now we can be at the wrong place at the wrong time, can't we? But we could have been at the right place at the right time also. Again, we bring stuff on our, by ourselves. Because of that law, sowing and reaping. See, in the circumstances that we fall into, we got to stop blaming. That's not a blame game. There is a reality that all influence is brought by the unseen realm. That the ruler of this world is evil. And he wants to keep people in an evil state of being. When people go, well, what about a merciful God? Mercy means someone's crying out to him. Mercy is, Lord, consider me. Grace is, he answered and considered. See, there's got to be a humble state of being. Does everybody understand that? It says, the word says God rejects the proud, but gives what? Grace. Grace to the humble. That's a way of escape. He always makes a way of escape somehow. One way or another. There's always, a, if we're truly hearing. Amen? And again, things happen. We're in this world. The world's ruled by evil. But we can't say, you know, that, well, it was such and such and this, you know, in this whole circumstance, people are blaming terrorists. They're blaming each other. All kinds of blames going on. But the reality is, the influence is from the unseen realm. The terrorist is just a body. The influence is of a spirit. Amen? In Psalm 109. Specific, we do not fight flesh and blood, but we fight principalities, powers of darkness, wickedness in heavenly places, and the rulers of the darkness of this age. That's what your fight is. That's what my fight is. Those are fallen angels. Those are demons. And those are people that are submitting to them. Amen? Psalm 109. Listen, people are not bad. Everyone say, I'm not bad. I'm not bad. People are deceived. God doesn't look at people's badness. He looks at the people's deception. That's why Jesus came, to bring light so people can see. To bring a manual, training manual, his truth, so people can see. He left his Holy Spirit so we could be led by the Spirit of God and know all truth. So we could escape those things. See, but people play the blame game and never really search out or examine their own self. Well, this person, this person. We bring everything on ourselves one way or another. Psalm 109. We're going to start at verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you speak it with me? Do not, be si do not keep silent, O God of my what? Praise. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful have opened against me. They have spoken against me with what? Lying tongue. They have also surrounded me with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. In return for my love, they are what? My accusers or blamers. But I what? Give myself to what? Prayer. In other words, I'm not going to the phone. I'm going to the throne. I'm going to make contact so I can hear what I'm supposed to do. Thus they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred 
for my life and for my love. But I give myself to prayer, to seek, to find, to know. See, everyone is born with a desire to seek truth. Everyone is born to know what is right and wrong. But God will never interfere with our free will. That's what makes us a part of his image. Free will. See, there are things that you and I have done that we don't even remember we did. And we may reap it years later. Whether it's in relationships, whether it's in jobs, whether it's in financial, whether it's in sin. Whatever it may be, there's so many things that we lose sight of and forget, but God never does. And neither does the enemy. Does everybody get it? The enemy doesn't forget either. So he's always looking for a way to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. That's his job, and he does it well. Why? Because he hates me and you. He hates all mankind. He wants to kill as many people as he can. Because as much blood is shed, this is not an open discussion. Because if much blood is shed, it opens a port for demonic activities. Everybody understand that? Demons love the blood of mankind. And they hate the blood of Jesus. Again, the devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? Is everybody okay? But what did he say? He says, look at all of these things. But I give myself to prayer. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. Ask and you're going to what? Receive. In Revelation 12. Is everybody okay? Amen. Blame in spirit. They play the blame game. You know, when we were children, we did that, didn't we? Amen. I mean, there's a lot of adults that still do it, you know. But again, it's people that don't want to take responsibility. Amen? I'm just going to live the way I want to live. I'm going to do what I want to do. And not take responsibility. In verse 10. Uh, let's start at verse 7 so we get an understanding. It says, And war broke out where? In heaven, Michael and his angels fought with the what? The dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was what? Cast out the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who what? Deceives the whole world. Is he still doing it? Yes. Does everybody get this? He deceives, or he's still deceiving the whole world. People still don't believe about demons. They still don't believe in spirits. Why do you think the bars say food and what? Spirits. Spirits. They might as well tell the people the truth. It's food and what? Demons. That's the truth. Listen, I was an individual that was, I was an addict for over 30 years. I died multiple times. I overdosed. But somebody was praying for my butt, and every time I got near that circumstance, I cried out to God, Help! I'm dying! And he answered. And he tried to put me in a place to learn. It took 30 years, or 20-something 20, 20 years, 20 years to uh, finally surrender. I, I, but I had to go through hell to get to heaven. And in fact, so the circumstances happened, I scared the hell out of me and hoped to make room for heaven. And, and that, you know, God doesn't, do, he didn't want me to perish. He doesn't want nobody to perish. But there's certain things where individuals have tied the hands of God where he can't do nothing. He can't do nothing. It's amazing how many atheists, when they get in trouble, they go, oh God, I don't believe in God. Oh God. Because that's where we came from. We came from his presence, not from the false presence. Amen. I mean, when I was an addict, I, I didn't, when I had my encounter with the Lord, I realized that everything I was looking for was his presence. Sex, drugs, rock and roll, bars, partying, and everything else. Money, false fulfillments, 
temporary. And I know many people that died. Some of my good friends died that were in the drug world. I s I killed, murdered. Man, when I was in the drug world, why would this one guy that would get clean and he'd try to bring Jesus to me? And I'd say, get out of here. Let's go get the dope. And he was a mechanic for the um, cigarette boats down in Miami. He used to make sure that all of their boats were running good so they could move across. One day I got a call. They shot and killed him in a phone booth and the son was there. They put his son in a taxi and sent him home. I don't know what he did, but my heart cried out. I don't know where he woke up. But I know that who you serve when you die is where you go. He was trying to bring me to the Lord, but he got disconnected himself. In verse 9, So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil, and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth. Where is he? And his angels, what? Were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now the salvation and strength of the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the what? The accuser, the blamer of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they what? How do they overcome them? By the, by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death because they gave in their life. Is everybody okay? The accuser was cast down. He's here. There's a spirit of blame. Amen? It accuses. In Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2. In verses 1. Somebody read there with me. Would you read, starting in verse 1, we'll read the first three verses. Blaming spirit. So, when we're not associating with a blaming spirit, we become blameless. Amen. Again, there was a day when the sons of God, which means angels, came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from go walking back and forth on the earth because his kingdom is in the second heaven. But he comes to and fro. He had, demons are foot soldiers and those who choose to serve the enemy or who haven't been unplugged from the world yet. In verse 3, And the Lord said to say, Satan, Have you what? Considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a what? Blameless. And what? Upright man who what? Fears God. That means he fears him. He reverences, honors him, and respects him. Because there's a relationship and there's a connect. Who fears God and what? Shuns evil, stays away from evil, departs from evil. And still he holds fast to his integrity. Although you entice me against him to destroy him without a cause. <laughs> Blameless man, upright, fears God, shuns evil, holds fast to integrity, holds to his identity as an offspring of God. Amen. See, when you lose identity, we drift. Some people have never gotten to their identity. But God is trying to bring them to the identity of who they are. Blameless, one that doesn't blame or hasn't caused blame. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And you can hear of all kinds of stuff going on. And everything is blamed on whatever. But nobody is telling the truth. Amen. They want to blame the Muslims. They want to blame this. They want to blame that. But nobody's blaming evil. 
Because that's the truth. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 4, let's speak it together, please. I thank my God always concerning you. Is everybody there? For the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come short in what? No gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, that you may be what? Blameless in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were what? Called. Into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word called means invited. That you are what? Invited. You know how many times we rejected the invitation? Somebody was praying for our blessed assurance, man. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Powerful. Invited into the fellowship of Christ. When we finally accepted that invitation, there's something very powerful in Revelation 17. But we can't say that we believe if we don't follow. Because the eyes of God says we're a liar. But thank God he's a God of second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and seventh chances and so forth. Amen? But like the woman that got caught in adultery, what did he say? Go and sin no more. Why? Because the worst thing's going to come on you. In Revelation 17, verse 12, it says, Then the ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind, and they give their power and authority to the beast. Beast is the representation of a fallen angel. And it says, they, these will make war with the lamb. And the lamb will overcome them, for he is the Lord of hosts and king of kings. And those who are with him are what? Called. Now grab hold of this. They were invited. They were chosen. They accepted it and put into practice what they learned. And they were what? Faithful. Because as they continued, they grabbed hold of their identity and they were unmovable. That's where God's trying to get his people to become unmovable. Does everybody see it? Those that were with him were called, invited, chosen. They accepted the call to put into practice the truth. They became faithful. They found their identity. They were unmovable. They were blameless. And they were overcoming the blaming spirit of pride. Willing to humble themselves when mistakes are made to maintain connection and to maintain their identity. It doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. We're going to make a mistake. Amen. But it doesn't mean we're going to go out and break covenant. That's willful sin. Colossians chapter 1. See, there's so many people that say they're believers and never even read the word, so they don't even know. They don't know the truth. Amen? Colossians chapter 1. Praise God. And verse 21, is everybody there? Blaming spirit. Let's become blameless. And you who were what? Verse 21. You who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, <clears throat> yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you what? 
holy and blameless above reproach in his sight. If what? See, when the word if mean, comes, it means there's something that you've got to make a choice. If and therefore. That means there's cooperation involved. If you what? Continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not what? Moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a what? A minister. Present us what? Holy and blameless. Not of blame or a blamer, but a responsibility, a person of responsibility and faithful. You know, blamers today... Believe it or not, many people who blame, they protect, they blame by lying. Why? Because lying protects the what? Old man, the old self. And again, self is the offspring of the evil. Many people, again, have never had the reality of the unseen influence. They never had the reality of true identity. You know, the government plays the blame, don't they? The media plays the blame. Political agendas play the blame. It's a game of blame. <laughs> it's incredible. But nobody speaks about evil influence. They speak about people, but they don't speak about the evil influence that causes people deception. So they practice evil because they're deceived, not because they're bad, but because they're deceived. 2 Corinthians 13. Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. Second Corinthians 13. Is everybody all right? Reality. This is reality. One day everyone is going to stand before their creator. Nobody escapes that. And either the demons are going to come and get you or the angels are, one or the other. That's reality. That is truth. That's why we must have a reverence and honor and respect. That's called the fear of the Lord. In verse 5, what does it say? Examine your what? Yourselves. As to whether you are in the faith or you're in the spirit or in the flesh. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are what? Disqualified. But I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Now I pray to God that you do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that you should do what is honorable Though we may seem disqualified to you. For we can do nothing against the truth, but what? For the truth. For the truth. Examine ourselves. Whether we're in the spirit or in the flesh. Whether we're a blamer or blameless. Whether we're being influenced by the spirit of God or by demonic forces. See, it's time to stop living like a human. And start living like a son of the offspring of the creator of God. Our identity is immortal and eternal in Christ. We must begin to express him. Not the old man. The world will hate you. Because they don't know him. The world will hate you. They will call you self-righteous because you eat of the tree of righteousness. That's why people don't understand the difference between good and righteous. Well, he's a good person. Why did this happen? Because they're not eating the tree of life. They're eating actually the tree of death. But that's where deception comes in, doesn't it? When you and I are in a, Listen, I, I played Robin Hood, you know. 
I tried to help everybody. I fronted dope to everybody. I had a pyramid that was a wealthy man. Man, you need money here. Go sell this. And it's an amazing thing because I lied, but I didn't like to lie. In fact, when I told the truth, I'd always say, well, God knows. Every once in a while when I did tell the truth. Because I was a heathen, I was a liar, and I was under the ruler of darkness. I was under the prince of power of hell. I served Satan for 39 years. And if I died in that condition, I would have woke up in hell. See, because there was something in me that was saying, man, you got to get things right. Why do I need to get things right? Because I'm going to be separated from God for the eternal. Every one of us that's here tonight needs this message. Amen. Not because of a man speaking, but because the anointing teaches us. Amen. Is everybody okay? Let's go to Romans 8. All glory. A couple more scriptures. You can go home and eat popcorn. <laughs> Pizza for C, though. Don't forget to pick up Z's pizza, right? <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Romans 8, verse 28. Romans 8, verse 28. Let's speak it together. We know what? That all things what? Work to the good to those who what? Love God. Love God. So if you love God, will you follow him? Amen. To those who are called, invited, according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed in the image of his son, that he might be the first. See that word might? That word might means there's got to be cooperation. Well, I was predestined. I'm going to heaven. No. You were predestined to go to heaven, but depending what you do here, either end up in heaven or hell. Amen. That he might be the firstborn among many, many, many brethren. Moreover, whom he what? Predestined, these he what? Also called, he invited. Whom he called, these he also justified. Why? Because they accepted it and they were chosen. They decided to put it into practice. And whom he justified, these he what? Also glorified because they became faithful and found their identity and became immovable. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who even at the right hand, who's at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter, yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor rulers, nor things of present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, God's love from you, me and you, is unconditional. But if the enemy breaches God's love, so people walk away from it, they turn love to lust. In Hebrews, Hebrew, chapter 10. In faithful, immovable, steadfast, and true identity. You know, people give up things because they go through trials and tribulations. That's a part of training. 
You know, one day we're going to wake up from this place and it's going to be like a one night dream. And Hebrews 10, verse 26, what does it say? If what? For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. In other words, there's no more covering. Unless a person repents. Because the blood always must go before the Spirit. But a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation will, dev will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him to say, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. This is God's word, not a man. And I want to close at 2 Peter chapter 3. It's happening. People need to stop blaming God. It's not his fault. It's ours. He's given us everything. He's given us authority, power, everything. He gave the earth to us. Even though the ruler is evil, we still have dominion over him. If we're under his covenant. But remember, the enemy tries to sway, he tries to entice, he tries to tempt. But if you're filled with the Spirit of God, filled with his word, you're going to overcome. You're going to overcome. It doesn't matter. He was in Christ as a new creation. Old things pass away. You know, it's time sometimes to just let go and go forward. Quit living in the past. Live in the future. The past can't do you any good. It just brings more torment, more pain, and more destruction. It opens the door to the enemy. The Bible says something specific. Make no place for the devil. If you truly know who you are, you won't make place for the devil. doesn't mean you won't make a mistake, but you'll repent quickly. You won't forgive me, Lord. It's not a religious act. It's a relationship. He's always before us. That's relationship. Again, I always will share with you. David said it perfectly. I always see the Lord before me. That's relationship. That's connection. So many people are, don't, people don't even pray in the morning. People don't even get connected. They don't even worship the Lord with all their heart. They don't seek the Lord. He says, seek and you will find. If you seek me with what? All of your heart, all of your might, all of your strength, and all of your mind, you will find me. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. Let's speak it together. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in what? Holy conduct and godliness. Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for what? A new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. There won't be any more evil. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be what? Diligent to be found by him in what? Peace without spot and blameless. And consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also in all of his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You, therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness. Is that a warning? Yeah. Being led away with the error of the what? Wicked. 
but grow. But what? Grow. grow. That means learn so you don't get burned. But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And to him be the glory both now and forever and ever and ever and ever. And everybody said amen. amen. The blaming spirit. Take dominion. You can't counsel a demon. You got to remove it. Amen. amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that seed that's been imparted tonight would grow and bear fruit for your glory. I pray for each and every one in this room that you'll not only bring healing to their bodies, but you'll bring freedom to their minds. That the spirit of torment and the spirit of blame would loose each and every one in this room. That the mind, the heart, and the will, and the desires of Christ will be manifested in them and through them, and the thirst and hunger for righteousness will be restored in every area. I pray, Lord, that you'll visit your people, bring them encouragement, bring them the counsel, correction, and the direction, because you chasten those you love. We accept your counsel, correction, and direction. And we ask, Lord, that you would possess us, that you would fill us, and that you would dress us, and that we would be more like Jesus in every area of our life, so that you may receive all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, giving us the wisdom to depart from evil, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Give the Lord a mighty hand tonight. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah.